Starlight, not spelt like that, but spelt like that, isn't a war, or an island, or a ship, or even a historical object. It is, or was, a substance, a type of mixture or compound that had a pretty amazing ability. It was fantastic at protecting materials against very high temperatures. And we're not talking about acetylene torch temperatures, although that would still be impressive, we're talking temperatures in excess of 10,000 degrees. And even when this was done, the opposite side of the material barely reached 70. It was brilliant, and from what I can tell, it was real. Wait, what's that? How did it do that exactly? Uh, well, before we go further into that, which we will, let's start at the beginning. And the story of any invention, of course, starts with its inventor. In the Starlight's case, that inventor is Maurice Ward. Maurice? Wait, hold on. Paste, but whatever the form, when Morris... Oh, Morris, okay. Well, I'm not gonna get that wrong. Morris was born in 1933 in the northeast of England, either in Yorkshire or County Durham, depending on who you ask. For us, nothing much of consequence happened in his early life. He didn't go to university, briefly operated a forklift for a chemical company, became a hairdresser for a long while, and enjoyed it, but more importantly for us, in his own time, he liked to tinker and invent, some sources suggesting he was trying to invent new types of hair dye, which makes sense. Through the former, he also gained roughly 15 years of experience working with plastics, like recycling and extrusion. But for most inventors, they need something more than that. They need an idea or an inspiration. For Maurice, I mean Morris, that inspiration was the crash of British Air Tours Flight 28M. You thought you'd found a video where I don't talk about the horrific deaths of multiple people? That's a funny joke. The flight was planned to carry 131 passengers and 6 crew from Manchester International Airport, which isn't that far from Maurice, I mean Morris, to the Corfu International Airport on the island of Corfu in the Ionian Sea on the 22nd of August 1985. But the flight was never to arrive, because when they attempted to take off at 6.12am, a loud bang shook the plane, initially thought to be a burst tyre, but was in fact failure of the left engine. The plane aborted takeoff, but the failure soon started a small but growing fire. Although the Boeing 737 never actually took off, by 6.18, 5 minutes later, 55 people were dead. Not through wings falling off or terrorism, and not even from the fire, but from the smoke. The smoke killed most of those 55 trapped on board, coming from the burning plane itself, which produced toxic fumes. It's one of those defining moments in air safety. Because of the disaster, more safety measures and precautions were soon implemented, so this horrible thing could never happen again. Big disasters tend to have that effect. Meanwhile, in Harleypool, Morris Ward was too listening to all of this, and as well saw if the plane had non-flammable and non-toxic components, the whole thing could have potentially been lessened or avoided. So, as inventors do, he started work, eventually spending a quarter of a million pounds including facilities on coming up with a plastic which would do just that. But, spoilers, by the end of March 1986, he had come up with a prototype, which was tested with the help of a friend, and seemed to work, but without any sort of formal scientific qualifications, traction just wasn't a thing that he was getting. Well, until he went on national television. He appeared on a BBC programme called Tomorrow's World, which if you don't know was a programme that focused on, unsurprisingly, Tomorrow's World, and new developments and predictions in the fields of science, technology, and all round interesting stuff. It's a good series, and showed a lot of now well-known stuff before it was popular. As I said, on the 8th of March 1990, Maurice, I mean Morris, goddammit, managed to get on the show and perform a stunt to prove the incredible properties of his new invention, now called Starlight by his granddaughter. He... Well actually, I might as well show you, since for once something I talk about happened when the cameras were around. Enjoy. But this torch here is producing a temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius. Now try cooking an ordinary egg like that, and in a very few seconds, the results would be quite an explosion. But I'm going to leave this torch here, blowing on this egg for a couple of minutes before we crack it open. And it ought to survive the inferno because it's coated with a remarkable new plastic. What it's made of is a closely guarded secret. All the inventor will say is that 20 years' experience as a lady's hairdresser led him to the discovery. Oh, let me just fast forward this bit. This episode is long as it is already. So, how is it doing? Well, it hasn't broken up at all, and you can see on the front here it's glowing red hot. But just watch this. If I turn the flame off, and remember that it was producing 1200 degrees Celsius, and I take that charred bit, and I put it flat in the palm of my hand, it only just feels warm. And if I then crack it open, what's more, the egg hasn't even begun to start cooking. 
Yeah, pretty incredible stuff, and evidently everyone else thought that too, as after this, everything changed for Mr. Ward. He suddenly had traction and interest from everyone from the general public to Boeing to NASA to the Department and Ministry of Defense. Morris then agreed for Starlight to undergo further testing, and apparently with the AWE, or Atomic Weapons Establishment, in July, heating a layer of the material with a temperature of 10,000 degrees, which not only resulted in both survival of it, but the other side only reached 70. I mentioned this before, but it's worth going over again. More R&D was undertaken, and according to Ward at a NATO test center, it was subject to the equivalent of 70 to 75 little boy detonations. It too survived. You can see why everyone would be interested. In fact, over 3,000 inquiries were made to Morris by separate organizations or companies in regards to perhaps their acquisition of the material. Well, 3,000 before he stopped counting. But this soon grew worse. As Morris put it in a radio interview in 2009, One of the things that crept into this is it's been the greed of the guy that wants to do the marketing. You know, they see it as making a packet for themselves they aren't necessarily bothered about the product, they aren't necessarily bothered about us. And so this was one of the big things that we had and has happened over the years. Yes, because business or government demand was so great that they started to try other ways. According to Ward, the UK government spent around £5 million trying, to quote Morris, plagiarise or try and replicate their own starlight. Boeing approached Morris to try and attempt some sort of agreement. Morris agreed in 1996, and I'll let him take it from here. Alan Atkins at Boeing asked me, on behalf of Boeing, if I wouldn't talk to anybody else, and if I'd stop all the publicity and so on going on, because they wanted it as a uh, sole license for the world, and they just dragged the heels for six years, and we have met every test that they set for us, and each time they would switch it and uh, bring in another program that they wanted doing. And it came to a bit of a crunch in 2002, and because they then said, oh, well, we had to tell them exactly what we had, we had to let them see the patent applications, we had to teach their chief chemist exactly how to do it, and I decided I would walk away. Let me just say there's a reason he never allowed others to retain samples. He said he wanted his material to be used in the right way, which is fair enough if a little confusing and unintuitive and subjective. It could be said that these attempts on his materials put him off from these businesses, or on the other hand he just never found a business or organisation that would treat Starlight right. But in the end, whichever one you pick, the result is the same. Morris Ward died in May 2011 without ever commercialising Starlight. So, is that the end of the story? Well, when Morris was interviewed, he said that... Yeah, I, I use it, we've got members of the family that know how to do it. But, come his death and now the six years since, no one has claimed that they know the recipe. Are they lying? Or was he? Did they just forget? There's something off here. This is, to put it plainly, really annoying, because if it is lost, we may never find it again, or take ages to do so. Think of all the uses it could be used for. Think of the potential. I mean, there are rumours that Starlight had a very short, effective life, and a 10-year-old sample could easily be destroyed at the same temperature, but even so, there's still so many uses, so many practical applications it could be applied to. It just sounds great to have, almost too good to be true. Oh, oh no. That actually might explain a lot, and I could honestly spend half an hour speculating about all this, but for the sake of you guys watching, and also my own editing, I will discuss only two possibilities. The first being the possibility that it was a hoax, that it wasn't real, that it was too good to be true. That's why he never released the formula, or let people retain samples. That's why when you look for all these tests that were conducted, you only find source leading back to Morris, and not any independent sources. That last one worries me deeply, because there should be some. Was everything I said just made up? Was it? Well, whilst logical and somewhat obvious on paper, there's still the samples and experiments that we know for sure existed and happened. There aren't nuclear bomb power tests out there, but there are quite a few available here on YouTube. For it to be one massive conspiracy, a 70 year old had to forge his own YouTube experiment repeats, as well as the initial public experiments that went out being extremely close to live on air. And also there's the fact that everyone involved with the conspiracy had to keep quiet. So that is something to consider, but you can see how flashy stunts as an introduction, wild but unsupported claims, lots of secrecy, all followed by complete silence, sounds quite suspicious, and that being the understatement of the century. 
It's fine on my end because a story about a man hoaxing a wonder material is still as interesting as him inventing one, but when you watch this and then tell your friends if you have any, or show your class like the brilliant teacher that I'm sure you are, keep that in mind. But there also might be another possibility as to why these independent sources aren't there to be found. This is scenario 2, that the government won in the end that they now have Starlight, know how to make it, and probably are currently, not that us mere civilians would have access to that information. This scenario explains the fact that no one has come forward because no one is allowed to. Furthermore, Morris was talking about and in active development of Starlight in at least 2009, so from that we can infer upon his death, he probably had some samples around. It's not like he could just quickly burn them all. Furthermore, Morris directly stated, And this, this thing about, um we don't write anything down on that, that was just some hype that was built up. Uh, the formulations, the, the composition of the formulations are, are um, fairly well documented. Which means there was certainly information in either his family or on his property or facilities up north about how to make Starlight. This explains their absence. The UK Ministry of Defence have the motive, previously expressed when he was alive. They would have the opportunity, after all this is the UK. They would probably also have the means to hush sources talking about about it. Well, all but the old man who invented it and wouldn't stop talking. Oh, but one final thing, I do remind you that this is pure speculation with exactly, um, uh, time, times by two, carry the one, uh, zero observable evidence for. I'm just throwing that scenario out there. I'm not sure whether I believe either of them, but I wouldn't berate someone for believing either. Go forth and discuss this in a civil manner down in the comments section. <laughs> Oh, I, al I almost said that with a straight face. Ah, uh, civil discussion like that's going to happen. Anyway, the videos I show in this video are on YouTube. Links in the description, or since most of my viewers seem to not know what that is, just search for Starlight or Morris Ward in the search bar. They're all there on his own YouTube channel. I checked, he said in an interview that that YouTube channel is him, which makes all the more reason to be suspicious when he starts subscribing to people from beyond the grave. So in any case, that's where you can find them to look for yourself and see whether they're real or not. So in the end, many respect his choices or see him as guilty and that he was morally obligated to share his creation, or it's fake and hate him or respect him for it, or even blame the businesses that put him off in the first place, with many intermediate shades of opinion in between. I find it annoying, personally, that humanity doesn't have access to this technology anymore, but I respect his choices entirely. And that is the story of Starlight. This could easily have been a 30 minute documentary, but if you want to do some additional research if you're interested, I've linked his YouTube channel and also the 46 minute audio interview I reference in the video as a starting point for the eager people down in the description. And all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching. Except not quite. I am with the story, but I do need to address that. You know, that thing. That. Yes, because provided someone doesn't expose me and I start hemorrhaging subs, I will be extremely close to hitting 100,000 subscribers, which happens to a lot of people on this site, but it's the first time it's happened to me, so it's really cool. I don't intend to do anything for it video-wise, and instead make more normal videos in its place, but if you want, I will do what I did last time and answer any question you may have for me, it'll just be in the comments instead of a regular video that goes up on my channel. So, put any question you have down there, and all that's left for me to say, Thank all of you for watching, for real this time.